illuminating your true self. April 28, 2015. You've become so caught up and focused on being good in all things external that for the most part dear ones you've forgotten all about your inner place of being. What we have observed is that you pay attention to your inner place mainly when it becomes stagnant and begins to interrupt whatever you are doing externally. The amount of excellence you apply to your external functions can also be applied to your inner place. Awareness is required for you to bring quality and personal excellence to your external activities, and it is awareness that brings excellence to your inner place of your divine being, as you are aware of your external actions and environment. Internal awareness begins being aware of your thoughts and emotions, what is considered to be your inner state or place of being. It is important to remind yourself that your external brilliance and quality of effort is not to be compromised by particular events that you are unable to control. In addition, your inner brilliance is not to be compromised by what is automatically going on in your thoughts and reactive, negative emotions. It is necessary dear ones to understand that there is an important difference that exists between the thoughts that come to you when you associate or react from, from the thoughts you intentionally think. Comprehend dear ones that all modes of unpleasant thoughts may indeed come into your mind, but if you don't buy into them as being true, or what you believe to be a guide to act upon, then in truth they can simply come and go without your need to strive for perfection. Every time you strive for perfection, you are choosing from your little self, the self that is never satisfied or happy with how you are, or how things are. Of course you want to improve yourself, including improving the inner and outer workings of who you are, but before you can improve, accept that you are whole and complete and not broken at all. Now when you intentionally think about something, or accept a thought that has risen on its own, you then become accountable for that thought. It is yours and cannot be blamed on someone else. Remember dear ones, thoughts that are intentional become actions, and as you know it, actions do have consequences. We know you may not always be able to control your thoughts when they associate to something or if they are reactive, but you can control the thoughts that are intentional. Keep in mind, you are responsible for what you can control. What do you do dear ones if you recognize a succession of thoughts or emotions that are critical, judgmental, mean, or even unforgiving? Do you wordlessly approve of them, while allowing them to continue? Would you allow your inner place of being to become your arena where you envision how to act out the ways you know you should not do in your outward life? Maybe you will use your inner place of being as a harmless outlet to let out some frustrated steam. But if you are doing all this inside of your inner place, wouldn't that mean you are polluting it? Instead of allowing unsavory thoughts and emotions to run their course, you could disavow them, and turn your attention away from them and on to more pleasant thoughts and emotions that are positive and productive. The more responsible you become, the higher quality work and effort you produce. The best guide you have on what is needed to be responsible is your endearing conscience. Understand dear ones, it is your conscience that directs your path towards excellence of your inner place of being as it also shines a brilliant light into your inner world, illuminating brightly what is true to what is false, and will shine on the gray areas that you are unsure of, and provide you with more certainty and clarity. Do you think it is possible dear ones for you to live with an inner paradigm of excellence? Can you live and be in such a way that your thoughts and emotions are able to reflect the person you are aiming to be? In the central part of your being is the core of purity that is of your true, authentic person. When you seek refinement and purity for your inner place of being, what you are essentially doing is aligning yourself with your conscience that is always joined with your true, authentic nature. When you take the time and look at what you have become, don't complicate matters by adding aspects of this and that, which might end up making you feel ashamed later on. Extend the golden rule interiorly as you share it externally. It is more than possible dear ones to treat people, even your secret thoughts and emotions, with the same respect and dignity that you wish to be treated by others. Even your secret thoughts and emotions deserve to be respected and treated with kindness, after all they are a part of you. Think about it dear ones, is it possible to greet the future by cultivating it in the present, while at the same time not becoming overwhelmed by your exaggerated apprehensions?
There are many deep spiritual questions you can ask yourself that require only honest and truthful answers. The purer you become inwardly, the more connected you are with the divine. Purity does matter dear ones, and the path towards becoming pure begins with your effort of coming from a place of inner brilliance and quality. As we have come to the end of this week's transmission, think of ways how you can bring brilliant quality into your inner place of being, and determine how being pure inward affects your outward performance. I am Ascended Master, El Moria through Julie Miller. SpiritualNetworks.com